In my previous video, I explained how to configure this TP-Link Wi-Fi range extender. In this video, I will take you inside the device to show you its internal components including the power supply and the main board. I will also demonstrate the voltage at which the main board operates. For this teardown, I have purchased a brand new device. I will unbox it in front of you and then proceed to dismantle it step by step. For a medium sized double story home, this extender is sufficient to cover the entire area with Wi-Fi. However, if your home is slightly larger, you may need additional unit to ensure full coverage. If you are using an outdoor Wi-Fi camera that is located far away, away from your main router, this extender is an excellent choice for boosting the signal to reach it reliably. This is the installation gate and we can follow the same steps to complete the configuration. I have already covered this in detail in my previous video on my channel. These wires are antenna connectors. They are a type of coaxial cable. Do not open these two screws. I opened them without knowing their purpose. Fortunately, it wasn't an issue for me, but it might be a problem when you, you try. I will explain more about this later. Make sure to handle everything very carefully. If any PCB traces are damaged, the unit may not work after reassembly. The boards are connected using male and female sockets. So you will need to gently pull them apart to disconnect the main board from the power supply board. The board you are looking at is the power supply board, also known as the SMBS board or switched mode power supply board. The power supply to the main board is delivered through this female socket. Typically the power source is connected to a female socket and the board that receives power has a male connector. However, in this case, it is designed in the other way around. They have used high quality male and female connectors which ensure a secure and reliable connection between the boards. This antenna connector is also a type of male and female connection. To disconnect it from the male connector, gently pry it using at the tip of a screwdriver.
these two are the phase and neutral pins and as you can see each pin is in directly connected to the board all the boards including the power supply board are detachable the actual phase and neutral connections are made through the spring like terminals located at the other end and one more thing is the earth pin do not have any connection these spring like terminals are made up of stainless steel on the power supply board the spring terminals are connected to the tinned traces on this pcb which carry the phase and neutral lines the lead used for tinning the pcb is of very high quality see it's a shiny earlier i advised you not to remove these two screws that is because they are used to secure the heat sink to the processor in my case i retightened them without any issues the heat sink is designed to effectively dissipate heat from the processor and it is made up of good quality metal with proper contacts to ensure efficient cooling next i will measure the output voltage of the power supply the reason i dismantled this unit is not just to show you the internal components but also to find out the operating voltage i am planning to add a battery backup to this unit so it can continue working during power failure this unit is working with a voltage of 3.4 volt you can see that that unit operates at around 3.4 volt based on the size of the heat sink and the heat generated by my already running unit it seems to draw a relatively high current in my upcoming video i will show you how to add a battery backup to keep this unit running during power outages so please stay tuned to my channel Please subscribe to my channel for getting more videos like this. That will be an encouragement to me for making more things like this to you. This is Tech Insert signing off. See you in another video. Till then, goodbye and please take care.